I'm, 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 like yeah, 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 man. Look, I'm a third too, but it's stopping at me. I ain't gonna hold you. Hey, it's Word. stopping at me. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> why? Why you definitely stopping it? Why yeah, you got on it? Because I ain't made a decision yet. Man, I don't know, bro. I just feel like that's I'm it. Gonna, After the third one, it yeah, is. I'm, yeah, it's over, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my son do his thing, bro. I be feeling like that sometimes too. I do. Be feeling I got that. my, I got my third out the way. It's gonna be his his decision. That nigga stink. PG. Oh damn, man. Listen, <clears throat> let me take these numbers real quick, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, they only down two, but. Yeah, bro, this nigga it's, shooting five or fourteen. It's like it's like, bro, like for Milwaukee, you could be like, oh, Milwaukee beat Brooklyn and Kyrie and Durant was broke or whatever the case, bro. You can't say the same with the Clippers and be like, oh, they 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 beat Utah, beat them, and Paul George is broke. Nah, that's just who he is. He just broke. <laughs> like he, it ain't no getting better. That shit, that shit sad. Like that shit really sad, bro. <laughs> Bro, him like, and Reggie yeah. Jackson done took more shots than Kawhi, bro. Like, Kawhi seven like, for thirteen. Like even Mil- even Milwaukee was like, oh, you know, what I'm saying we were so close to be Brooklyn or whatever. We know Middleton can play better, bro. How do you say something like that with the Clippers, bro? Like, damn, like our second best player really is broke. Like he <laughs> he just broke. He can't fix it. This shit bad, bro. bro. It's like Kawhi yeah. and then everybody else just got to play good to make up for Paul George, bro. bro. Like this Reggie Jackson bad. got Reg, Reggie Jackson got to score twenty and shit. Like what, bro? That shit is horrible. And Donovan Mitchell handing out these light thirty pieces like that, thirteen to twenty three for thirty two right now. Nine minutes left to go in the fourth. Man, but like, see the thing, the thing about Utah too, bro. That 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 kind of like throw me for a loop is like. I told Twan this months ago, bro. If you stop Donovan Mitchell and Jordan Clarkson, you can beat Utah easily. Bro. But you can't. Donovan Mitchell wearing niggas out, bro. Bro, it's only the second round. You feel me? He 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 just came back. You know Hold what I'm saying? On, like don't, he don't don't do the second round like that. Don't do the second round. It's it's some dogs in that second round. Come on, man. I, I just feel like I told Tuan this, bro, I, and I I tell everybody this shit. Like, bro, you stop Donovan Mitchell, if you and not even stop him because you're not gonna stop a star, obviously. But if you hold Donovan Mitchell to like 25, and you hold Clarkson to 15, I guarantee you can beat them. What I you know what makes Donovan so good, bro? Another reason people hate the NBA, uh, because Bob compared him to D Wade. D Wade knew how to draw a foul, bro. I'm about to Donovan say knew too. Yeah, Donovan, Donovan dropped out. Hey, we Donovan gotta remember though. Against Y'all know something about Donovan, Donovan that I don't think niggas realize. He's six one. That's short. Sure, he like six know. feet six. Bro, he like I six feet six three six. No, bro, yeah, he like six feet like six, six one, bro. He's not six three six four. He is six feet six one, bro. That's crazy. Yeah, and he hooping like that. And he hooping like that. That mean he got bunnies for real, bro. Yeah. Nah, hey, he man. is, he is, he is, he is hey, John, six one. That's crazy. His his, his, his jumper six, pure too, because I swear I feel like he get high as hell on his jumper. That must be straight up, straight down. That bro, is he, crazy. He listed at six one. Okay, yeah, yeah, I hey, man, be careful. <laughs> Just be careful. That's all I'm gonna say. Be careful. These niggas gonna play Phoenix. I got Phoenix. I think I might have Phoenix winning, but be careful. Let's be careful. I got them losing to the Phoenix. I mean, I got uh, Phoenix losing, bro. In seven. In six. This round? Let me tell you. No, 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 no. no Utah. I got, no, if if yeah, if Phoenix, if Phoenix play Utah, I got Utah wearing them out. I'm gonna tell you why. Bro, Phoenix is not deep like people think they are. You know what I'm saying? Like once it gets to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, campaign, can Cameron Payne do his thing or whatever like that. But other than that, bro, like what real five power do they pack off their bench? You know what I'm saying? Like it you ain't... do know, you do know that them niggas put up a hundred points the other night and nobody scored over twenty. That's this, but I'm, so, that was that was one guy. Look who they played against, Bobby. They started Campazo and Austin Rivers. Yeah, he started. No, nah, yeah. he come off the bench. He come off the bench. Well, but even but even with Cam Johnson, Gene, Cam Johnson just not no difference maker. Like he a, he a knockdown shooter. He's just a shooter, bro. Like honestly, he's not. No, a, he's bro, not a Jordan, Cla- bro. No. Cam Johnson is bro, not a Jordan. For, Cla- it's level. For I didn't, I didn't him, bro. For he's them, not. Bro. Gene, Gene, he's oh, not. He's oh, not creating his own shot. He ain't got to be Jordan Clarkson to make a difference, bro. That's a six man of the year. No, I'm talking Cam Johnson come in and can score the ball. 
He don't he, need nobody to help for real. People, I feel like people create shots for him. He not, he not. Cre- I watch. I but watch he knocking them bitches down. down he, that. he, he is knocking them down. I just, I just, I just said he's a knockdown shooter. But he, he getting to that cup too. Like, what are we talking about? Cam, bro, I guarantee if we look up what Cam Johnson is averaging in the playoffs, it's probably six points. So yeah, let's just, I was let's about just, to say, let's just, let's just, let's just, he was more of a, more of a shooter. I haven't even, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't, well, Thoroughly watched I, I mean, let me ask this. Like, in our series, he was just shooting. Yeah. Let me ask like, this: Would you like him on the Grizzlies? Yeah, as a shooter, who would like him? Well, would you like him on the Lakers? Yeah, shooter. Yeah. You can well, never have enough like shooters. Yeah, I take him. I would love him. If okay. Possible. Okay. To so me, okay. that sounds like a difference maker. Oh. That sounds like oh. a difference maker to me. Okay, so let me give you a scenario. Let me give you a scenario, with Utah. So Jordan Clarkson won. Jordan Clarkson won six million a year, right? Guess who was number two? Ryan Joe Ingles. So you got two perennial six man of the year coming off your bench. Then on top of you got Derek Favors, who was a lottery pick. The Clippers <laughs> had the same like thing it's, last year. It's 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 levels. You know the, what I'm saying? The like Clippers just, had the same I, thing though last year. Who the, the Clippers ass. We the, but I'm saying the, last we, last year they had the same man. thing though. <laughs> the Clippers ass. I don't even know why we about 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 beat them. We talk. We talk about. We talk. Who? No no no. I, I guarantee. I respect you guys as a team. I nah, just, I, I, I just, can't take that I just, guarantee. I just think that I just think that Phoenix is top heavy, and I feel like once you get past, I mean, they got Dario Sarge uh, backing up, backing up uh, DeAndre Aiden. Their their starting five is certainly uh, 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 there's a gap, but to yeah. call like the Lakers are top heavy, right? Um, I like campaign. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like top campaign heavy too. cool. He cool. I feel like top heavy teams, like got two players that's just really, really good, and everybody else is average. I don't yeah. think Phoenix is top heavy necessarily, but they starting five is a that's their goal man, as it should be. But they uh, definitely I, ain't as good as Utah. It's not. I just, I just, yeah, the, like Utah depth, bro. Like people don't realize, bro. Utah really got another dude in they starting five that can get thirty. Like <laughs> legit can get thirty. Bogdanovich is a bucket. You feel me? And he, he can get 30. Like Mike Conley not even playing right now. He 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 averaging 20 in the playoffs or whatever like that. Like, so okay. it's like they they depth is like crazy. So when you go to Phoenix, bro, it's like if you stop D book, you can beat Phoenix. But with but with like with like I said, with with Utah, it's like, oh, you gotta stop Jordan Clarkson, you gotta stop Donovan Mitchell, you gotta stop Bogdanovich. You got to stop motherfucking Royce O'Neal from shooting damn threes because he's playing the four. So it's like he picking and popping this shit. And he Mike Conley not even stuff. playing Mike right Conley. now either. That's what I'm so saying. You, That's what I'm saying. Mike, Mike Conley coming out. going to the finals. I think they, I think they will. I think they honestly I go to the And they losing to Brooklyn. I told, I told y'all. Yeah, I told y'all this, though. Like, when they played us, I said, this is Utah. <laughs> this is Utah. Them niggas is losing to Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is Utah no. year to make the finals. If they don't, if they don't make the finals this year, this is going to be a very, very disappointing year. This is a consolation Nets. year for everybody but the Nets. <laughs> no, I just feel like, I feel like. This shit is consolation <laughs> for everybody but Brooklyn, nigga. <laughs> Hey, but I feel like I feel, I feel the I feel, same way, yo. Like this is yeah. consolation for everybody but Brooklyn. But listen, yeah. man, welcome back to the Open Run Podcast, episode <laughs> eleven. You feel me? I'm your boy Cinco. Got Gino, D Trill, Twan, and we got a special guest, man, Lee High Tower, the third. You know what I'm saying? We're going to put that third on there, man, for my boy Lee, man. So Lee is Twan's cousin, right? Yeah. Right, Twan's right, cousin. Right, right. Uh, on, my, on, on mom's side. Mom's side, and I'm gonna say professional mm-hmm. football player overseas. That's how we want to. Right, right, right. Say that. Yeah, okay. No Played uh, in Japan, right? Yeah, I'm playing in Japan, Tokyo, Japan. And you've been there we how many years? Also play for my boys. Don't skip over that. Who you play? Coach, baby. You Don't play from Coach? Baby. Okay. Oh yeah, I had a yeah, I had a little uh practice squad stint with the Colts uh, okay. a couple years ago, maybe like four or five years ago. Hey, some niggas don't even make that practice squad, bro. So you know what I'm saying? No idea. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Look, some niggas don't so, even make that. But uh, how many how many years you been in Tokyo so far? I've been in Tokyo since uh March 2018. So I'm going on my fourth season right now. So I done played yeah. three seasons with the team. And uh, yeah, going on four years. So that means you gotta like Tokyo to be there for three years, three, three, four years. Yeah, man, it's it's cool. It's, uh, 
I mean, getting out of America was a, a trip, yo. Especially like, you know, with recent history and everything that's been happening. So getting out of America and just experiencing life not in America was more so like that's keeping me there more than like actually Tokyo or Japan. Tokyo is mm. cool too. Like I'm having a good time, but just the fact of like being somewhere different is is more so, yeah, what's really got me. You took up Japanese Bro. or you, you said fuck it? I got a little bit of Japanese, yeah. I could get around in like a taxi or like I could give you like a surface level conversation, but uh I can't really get deep. It's hard. Man. It's over. Yeah. It's like it's yeah, it's a trip. But yeah, I got a little bit though. You What's your seen? favorite food to eat over there? Like, I mean, I know it's different stuff, but I mean, you got to uh, adjust to your diet and everything. But like, what's your... You eating rice right. every day. You eating rice every day. I'm doing like that. Oh, everything. Every rice day. Every I know day. it. Nah, I know it. <laughs> I know it. Rice every day. For sure. Yeah, rice just becomes so basic. Rice is like, man, anything. Because you can always make a rice bowl. You could... I'm not eating too much meat right now, but when I was, like, you would just fry up some chicken, put it over rice, you could do anything. And it's everywhere and it's cheap. Um, my favorite thing though, um, man, to be real with you, I get tired of the food, to be honest. Like, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember you was on the snacks for a minute. I was on the snacks for a minute. The snacks, every once in a while, like somebody just put me on to like a new, like little salty pretzel. That's kind of crazy. Okay. But yeah, like other than that, like I mean, sushi, the sushi is fire, of course. Um, yeah. And I never ate sushi before I got out there either. So it was like something new too. The ramen is good, but it's like, it's not Everybody the same, man. I'm used to call. like soul food. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool. I think ramen is dope, like when you like grab a bite of it, but like right, every right, day right, ramen right. is like, yeah, yeah I feel that's gonna get old fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I'm I hear that back, out there, bro. Oh. Y'all hear that out there? All the all the Japanese people out there hate y'all food. No, I'm just <laughs> 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 hey, bro. Oh, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back, bro. Shoot, uh, Loyola. You know, leaving Loyola Word. to go to Idaho first what was that transition like like leaving LA then then ended up out there man man yo it was uh just it was just the the culture in general yeah it was uh it was a trip man because yeah like I went to school downtown LA um went to like elementary school in Koreatown like I was always grew up kind of around downtown LA my parents worked downtown we used to commute into the city but so I had like that, like very diverse upbringing of like different people and all of that. And then Boise, Idaho was uh, like the opposite. It was very different. It was like the mm. school and the football team. And then outside of that, everything kind of revolved around the team and like the school. So it was, uh, it was, it was, uh, I mean, for me, it didn't really feel like real life. Like, I don't know how y'all college experience was, but for me, it was like, I'm just going here so I could go to the league. Like that was the only thing I was yeah. thinking in my head. Like I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? Do whatever I got to do for these n- next couple of years, but I'm about to go to the league. So yeah, it didn't really register to me like all of the cultural differences and how that may have affected me at the time, but it was different right. for sure. You got to stay, what, three years in college for the NFL? You got to stay three for, for the league, yeah. That's OD. Like, this yeah. up, like Idaho, right? Like, was, was, was we out yeah. there? Was we out there? Man, <laughs> on the there. team, yo. <laughs> we ain't out <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, on the team or or on the basketball team or some running track. But other than that, oh, you was out really. there. Let me let me ask you something. You you was out there eating mayo, huh? <laughs> 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 man, when, it, when, it, when it's all that stereo, yo, <laughs> no. that's the only option. It's like my boy pleads the field. It is what it is. <laughs> nigga had a mayonnaise no. sandwich, pure mayonnaise sandwich, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> all right, check it out, bro. Look, uh, I think cool. you had what you had 
you had 31 tackles, right? 31 tackles, one interception, and seven starts. Oh, this man went and did research, yo. <laughs> you already know, bro. I know the numbers. Uh, okay, yes, word. Um, before going to Houston, before transferring to Houston or whatever. And you know, like, how was that transition? Right. For you? Are you in the UH? Yeah, I went to UH, yo. Uh, that's where I graduated from. And uh, UH was love, man. It was um, much more my speed and then my mother's people. So me and Twan, we, uh, it's through his mother, but it's my father. That's how we cousins. Mm -hmm. But on my mother's side, they are um, kind of from Houston and from like, like her, her, my mother's father's from Louisiana. My mother's mother's from like the Houston area, the city called Beaumont. So like I had cousins down there and it was like, you know, the culture was a little more familiar. Like you said Beaumont? More black people. Yeah, that's what my uh mom That's what that's what from. uh that's what Perkin Big Perk was uh screaming on, on ESPN, wasn't he? <laughs> Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, Texas. <laughs> was he? Was he? Well, I don't yeah. even know. Now y'all got, uh, got beef because you didn't know where you was from. <laughs> right. Right. Man, now y'all got beef because you didn't know crazy. Big Perk was from down there. <laughs> See, I don't want no issue either because I can't claim nowhere. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man, it was it was, it was was cool going to Houston, man. TSU right across the street. Like, Houston was right. live. Yeah, Houston we, was real. We ain't in I Idaho, but Houston. we in Houston. We ain't in Idaho, but we the in H Houston. The H is one of my favorite places, yo. If I was living in America, I'd probably go back to the yeah. H right now. For sure. Yeah. A lot of people okay. say that, man. I, told, I told y'all cool. recently. I told y'all if yo. I get out of Atlanta, I'm, I'm in the H. I'm in yeah. the H. Man, the H is solid, me, yo. The H is solid. Tell me about Del, Fr Del Frisco's, bro. Del Frisco's got the fire... Uh, what they got? Cheese. They got the they fire got cheese, steak, cheese steak, egg rolls. Steak, egg rolls. Come on, yeah, man. Know. Come on now, <laughs> man. <laughs> Talk to me, man. You talking the, my lingo. The, the joints off man. the chain, yo. Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, the Frisco's a salad, man. Right. Yeah, the food in Houston all together is crazy, man. Houston, the vibe. Houston, Houston is a cool too, little vibe, too, man. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted to ask you, so I wanted to ask you something. I know, so like you was in Houston for a while, and I know that was like way different from like you know Boise or whatever. Um, what right. type of stuff were you into, like you know, as far as like style wise? Like, cause I know you know from you from the West Coast, you never and you know you've been to different places. So you went from you know the West Coast to Idaho to Houston, you know what I'm saying to Tokyo, even Tokyo, Japan. And a lot of people don't re don't realize like right. that's one of my places, like that I would love to go. Cause I feel like the style out there is super fire. You know what I'm saying? They have a lot of different brands out there from Capital, you know, a lot of, you know, Bake, a lot of different places like that are out in Japan. And it, a lot of people don't right. understand it's really like a melting pot for style. So like, what what would you say like, you know, what were some of the things you picked up from every place that you went to? Like, you know, from Houston to Tokyo, like what were some of the style and trends that you may have seen? Man, that's a great question, yo. Um, I feel like my style, like, especially when I was living in Houston, especially when I was going to college in Houston, like, I wasn't really getting dressed every day. Like, I was, you know what I'm saying, typical athlete. I'm wearing sweatpants. Um, I'm wearing shorts. Like, I'm kind of just, like, always in athletic gear. And then when we go out to the club or something, I may put on, like, you know, like polos was real popular back then. Like yeah. I probably rock a, a a crispy polo or like some uh. Actually, in Houston, I did start wearing like like my shoes, like the kind of dress shoes I would wear. Like I would wear like um, what's you know like the little frat boy like type boat type <laughs> shoes. You was on your I grown man those joints. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. but that's kind of yeah. I think that's that's kind of my style. Even to this day, I'm pretty casual relax if i'm doing something Man, that's please. not you know what i'm saying involved but if i'm going out like i'm more like some slacks some it. you know what i'm saying a nice pair of loafers or something you're a smooth in operator tokyo man i do what i can man i do my best <laughs> for real uh in tokyo i think what i like about them is like everything fits very well like the the, yeah. the fit of all the clothes is very like particular and kind of like 
um, like cuffed or you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, cut yeah. at a certain uh, just like length or whatever. Yeah. And um, like I, I appreciate that, like that tapered kind of look. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that's probably what I'm picking up from Tokyo. But I remember like Twan was asking me about some clothing store. And I'm thinking it was like the name of the store was like some kind of plant shop. And that's like what I'm into. So cactus I'm like, plant. bro, like, I don't think oh, they got, plant. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, bro, I don't think they got no cactuses out here, bro. Like I'm thinking about like the climate and whatnot. <laughs> so like when it, <laughs> yeah. when it comes to like that type of, like the Tokyo underground, cause I know a lot of people are into that, especially like who's attached to hip hop culture. Like I'm not yeah. really hip at all, to be real with you. Like I, I don't, I don't have like the the streetwear knowledge or like the um even like shoes and Jordans and whatnot. Like I'm just not very um aware of but what's see, going on and all of that. But see, I like I like what you said as far as like your style, like when you go out, like you know what I'm saying, you will put you will put slacks on, you put, you know, loafers or whatever like that. You know, something that you comfortable wearing. And I feel like a lot of, you right. know, you, did, you never said like, oh, my style changed or converted. You said like, hey, even still to this day, I rock the same stuff. And I kind of feel like nowadays or even back then, you know, as a culture, we tend to try to appease to other people, you know, style or what other people may say is cool. You know what I'm saying? Instead of right. stuff that we stuff that we like or stuff that we might think is fly. You know what I'm saying? Shit. If you yeah, think some yeah, damn Jabos, yeah, sure. you think some Jabos fly, or you think, <laughs> like I said, some Apollo <laughs> shirt and some forces is fly. Like, my thing is, like, you wear what you want. You know what I'm saying? You you wear what you want and you rock right. it how you rock it. Because can't nobody else, you know, do it like you do it. So that's, that, I respect yeah. that, bro. So check yeah, this out. No man. Doubt, man. Nah, man. You got to, no, nah, listen, man. You got to <laughs> preach to these guys, bro. Because I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, you know, t shirt, v neck, or whatever it's going to be. Sweats every day. Right. I ain't playing no more. I ain't hooping no more. I'm a dad now. I'm married and stuff, but I ain't. I ain't got time for all the style and stuff, bro. Keep <laughs> these young men to get off my back, bro. Like, bro, I, I ain't no, bro. I ain't no dad, bro. But I'm, 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 I'm chilling too, bro. Men, men and Twan be the ones, bro. I'll be chilling. I'll be chilling. I'll be chilling. Bro. Bro. Don't be me, bro. Viewers out there, we want y'all to understand one thing about Gene Johnson because he Here loves to do this. Here we go. Gene, Gene had the most <laughs> shoes out of anybody on this podcast in college. I'm talking about you walk in his room, it was Jordans everywhere. Granted, he loves shoes so much, he worked at Hibbit. Like, he would have literally every Saturday, whenever the new shoe, the Jordans or whatever dropped, Gene would have them all ahead of time. Like, so don't buy to this whole facade. Oh, I'm a dad. I don't care about this stuff. Let me tell you something. Oh. When Gene gets to that point, I promise you. He's gonna have a full collection. He wants to be that dude that he loves the gym. This gym is telling me his goal. He wants to be that dude that's big as hell in the gym, strong as hell. And you look down and he got the freshest shoes on in the gym. He wants to be that dude. That don't he even make sense, dude. bro. He wants to be the dude working out in Yeezys and all that other stuff like that. Like uh, he's nah. gonna be that guy. He's gonna be that guy. Don't believe me. Don't buy so, none of this stuff. But listen, I be chilling though. I, I me and Gene. You good. Clearly, this is paternity yeah, yeah. to attack pocket. on me. Oh. And I don't really appreciate that. I don't know why anybody wants to be big just to wear nice shoes. That's that's, <laughs> that's, not, that's not the goal, fam. But I do like shoes. I'm gonna come back to a lot of them. Cause I feel like in the future with Kobe's and stuff, they're gonna be doing some special stuff, you know, and with LeBron's and some other stuff. Jordan's I'm kind of over, bro, but. I'm just saying style in general. Y'all know I've never been the type yeah. to really dress like that. And there's nothing wrong right. with that. I just see my my time and money going other places. Not that you got to go broke to look good at all. But right. when it comes to that, man, um, you know what I'm saying? You, you've been on practice squads, Lee. You've been around a little bit. And uh, you've been in Japan for some years now. You know, when it comes to contracts and stuff like that, like, you know, and, and even we can get into the spending and a couple of questions later, but I just kind of want to talk about what the structure of those contracts looks compared to the NFL. If you have any leverage, like how are you going into the room to negotiate those things? Man, so in Japan, it's, um, it's a lot more straightforward and it's a lot, uh, for me, I like it a lot better because it's, um, like obviously the biggest difference is the money, right? Like it's nowhere near the same amount of money. Sure. Um, 
but it's like they default to one year contracts. So they not, Whoa. you know, everything in the league, you know, like they may sign you for five years, but you may play one season and be out of there next year. Or, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, like these numbers that they throw out, uh, like how many years you sign for or whatever, like it's not set in stone. Like this, these contracts that they giving me in Japan, like we gonna sign you for a year and like this is the bread you gonna get for this year. And like, as long as you don't mess it up, like, you know, we gonna stick by it. If a global pandemic happens and they cut our season short, we gonna stick by right. it. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, like oh, different oh. stuff like that is mm. like, it's super solid cause it's just this one year. So they don't feel like they on the hook. Like worst case scenario, like we just gonna pay you for this one year and like whatever happens, we'll just move on. Yeah. Um, but then it also like gives you that incentive that it could be better mm. next year if you play well and like the team does good and you assimilate with the culture and you know what I'm saying? You get that instant return. Like you have a good year, bam, next year, they take care of you a little better. Um, so yeah, for me, like the stability is uh, like, I'm still on one year contracts, but it feels more stable in the sense that I, I really have like uh, a better control over my own destiny out here or in Japan. Stability. Have they, have they ever been like uh they ever been late with your money? Never, yo. Every time Never? It's been on time. Bro, that's so yeah. wild because I played overseas and niggas used to be late. They used to tell us Word. like we'll pay you yeah. in practice and you get to practice and I don't got that check, so I'm not practicing today because I ain't the Word. money ain't there. <laughs> like <laughs> like we done had uh, hooping overseas. Yeah. You you go through that, like you know payday is on the 26th. If I walk into practice on the 26th and the general manager ain't there handing me my bread before practice, I'm not getting on the court. I'm on the sideline until he can come. If he show up to practice 15 minutes with 15 minutes left in practice, I'll practice that last 15 minutes. But if he ain't, if that money ain't there. What, 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 what country was you in? I've been in Iraq, Austria, Armenia, Slovakia, and Israel. Oh, word. Yeah, so this man said Iraq. I wasn't ready for that one. Family. I was in Iraq. I was in Iraq. For, look, listen. They paid. They paid. They paid you in cash. Mark. I was in Iraq for two months, and I made the most money out of everywhere I've been in Iraq in two months. That they, middle, they that Middle that Eastern stuff. money, huh? That's that the only thing. You, they gotta pay you because you don't, you can't really do shit else. Do, it's like do I would. This is why COVID and lockdown was okay with me because I literally was on a lockdown in Iraq where I leave my room to go practice. I leave my room to go play the game. Outside of that, I'm in the hotel room all day long. The food is downstairs. It's a buffet, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Really, I, feel like you, I feel like you was eating good in Iraq. Am I tripping? Or was I, was eating, I was eating pretty decent. I was eating pretty decent. Okay. Like they, okay. they, so they, so did you, they did you stay tap in with the locals anywhere. Then? No, not in Iraq. No, Hell no. And I, in Iraq, bro, in, Iraq, in Iraq, it's like this. So y'all know, um, Baghdad is the capital. So where I lived at I was five oh, hours we'll away from oh, Baghdad. So my first week, I did a week. I, did, I spent a whole week in Baghdad because we had to play two games that week. They had the military outside of our hotel. And then, like, that was the only time I left my room was in Baghdad. Like, I could walk Baghdad because they had a strip where all the food and stuff was at. So, uh, only thing about Iraq is Iraqi people think every black person is Michael Jordan. Like, that's the only thing they know. So, it's like, they man. see you and they be like, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. And then they don't know how to ask you for a picture. So, they just take out their phone and just hold it up to their face. Man, and you just kind of got really hitting you with the Michael <laughs> right, Jordan. Yeah, that. Michael, yeah. that's all they say, but like, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. I'd be like, no, Come it's on, not. Yeah, I'm I not. Said, I would have like said, no I would have said, I would have said, Borat, Borat, fuck. See, see, <laughs> oh, yo, nah, see, yo, nah, look, yo, ass would have been the one to get caught up. And nah, then in Iraq, too, you, you got to be careful. Like out there, you really had to be careful because <laughs> you don't, you don't know who's who. Like legitimately, you don't know who's who. Like so, check this out, man. I I, I, love it, bro. I wanted to talk about the structure of the contracts because you brought up a good point when it comes to year to year. You know, obviously, granted that you stay healthy, and you know we're gonna pray for that, you mm -hmm. know, for sure, and, and speak that into existence. So, I can see where there's more stability year to year, knowing that that year you're going to make that no matter what. But 
there are advantages as well to how the NFL does things, NBA, where not everything's guaranteed, but you still are under contract. So if you do get hurt, you still have a chance to come back and perform. You see what I'm saying? Whereas if you if you get an ACL out there, and I'm not saying all of Japan works this way, but in your experience, if I were to tell my ACL one year and they don't sign me that next year, I'm, I'm pretty much SOL while I'm rehab. And so I got to find another stream of income. So with that said, it's like, is that something you've thought about? Have you started creating other streams of income? Or you invest your money in other places? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, um, yeah, when I when I chose to come to Japan, a big part of my selling point was that um, we only work two days a week. So I only work on Saturday and Sunday. And um, I always wanted to um, do some type of international business. I never knew exactly mm. how I wanted to do it, but I knew I wanted to travel. And so I just saw this as like the perfect gateway. I could continue to play football. I could make some money playing football. And then I also just have this complete cultural shift to where I'm going to the other side of the world. I'm getting to live in Tokyo. And I have, so up until this point, I've tried, like I'll get into the specifics of really how I was, the things that I've tried to do. Like I tried to do a a CBD business, like operate that in Tokyo. And uh, it failed for sure. Like um, Part of it. the biggest, the biggest obstacle that I saw myself, like I did a, a pop up there, and I was starting to like um, reach out to some of the places that would be like dispensaries, so to speak, that were selling yeah. CBD. And like, you know, they were they're kind of marketing it as a because like traditional cannabis with THC is illegal out there, so they market it as like a way to like do like smoke weed legally instead of like marketing it as like a separate thing that has its certain benefits. So like educating the population, I saw it was going to be a struggle. Yeah. And then I also at the same time, just like got privy to more information about like CBD probably needing THC to, you know, be active. So I wasn't as confident in the product anymore either. So I just kind of like got up out of it. Um, I ran a, a cooking business, so I have a, a background in cooking. I managed a food truck when I was living in Houston. And so I did like a little underground cooking business um, this year, uh, the start of this year, like I did a, a, a pop-up kitchen and was just like selling to some of my friends and like some networks I was involved with. And uh, I was actually serving gumbo. Um, and then I did like a Moroccan chickpea stew, like as a vegan option. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, like those are things that like I just kind of threw together. Like I'm, I'm kind of in the process of like I have all this time Monday through Friday. Um, I'm getting paid for football. Like I, I have um, the ab- ability to explore things. And then like I did kind of what everybody in our generation is doing. Like I played a little bit of Bitcoin, you know what I'm saying? I played a little yeah. bit of the stock market. Like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tapped into where like I pay attention to what is going on around me. Yeah. So like I've, you know, uh, played in different areas and won some and lost some. But right now I'm really focused on like learning how to grow things, mm-hmm. learning how to farm. I volunteered on a farm. And so like now the vision is getting more clear to where like I want to um, produce things from like farm. Like I want to farm yeah. and uh, have farmland and have some type of farming business and then branch out from there and manufacturing and do other things like that. That's I'm love, man. That. J- Jane, Jane got me, though. <laughs> My now nah, you, you got you thought it, of, bro. You good. You, you, good. you, saw you ever thought about, like, like, I see you got the, you know, you got the Dewey on, you got the Do-Rag. You ever thought about, like, investing in that? I'm just fucking with you, bro. I'm just messing with you. No, anyway, <laughs> investing, in, investing in a do rag. Yo, this is actually, I, let me give a shout out to my homie, yo. Uh, he got his uh, products, it's called Sauce S O S S. It's a uh, stand for Star Organic Soap Smooth. Okay. And, Come on, uh, man. Yeah, he got See? he got all type of stuff. Um, hair wave, wave grease. He got oh, do rags. He got. Uh, yeah, some, some cool See, there's only man. one, there's only okay. one nigga on this call, maybe that need that wave grease, man. That's a strong baby. That's a strong baby. I'm gonna go. I got two more questions for you, bro. Word, word, word. 
and I, I'm be done with college. I know 2013, 2013, was it 2013 was the rest of your year? Mm. 2013. Yeah, 2013. Yeah. Man, them years get messed up on me. Yeah, I think so. 2013. Okay, so I think it was 2014 where you uh I think you you, uh, you started your first six games in your first true right. year. Right. Before you heard your Achilles, right? Somewhere around there, yeah. Okay. Right, okay. right, right. And then the Achilles sideline for the remainder of the year. What was it like yeah. battling those obstacles? <clears throat> like you, tore, that, you, you know? tore your Achilles, like ruptured it. Yeah, ruptured my shit. Yeah, that it was fucked up, bro. <laughs> like that <clears throat> shit was fucked up, bro. That's one of the worst um, injuries. I ruptured my shit too. That shit crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a. Uh, it was. It was crazy, yo. Um, mentally battling with that, like about to go to Houston, red shirt play a year and then I'm off to the league. Like I'm not right. coming back from mm-hmm. last year. So yeah. And then I was playing well too. Like in that game that I got hurt, had a pick six, like I was building momentum. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was starting to happen. And uh, yeah, it was tough, man. It was tough. Like just dealing with that rehabbing. Um, sure. Bill Carrick. Yeah, though. man. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely, you, it I definitely mean- like, you, you bounce ahead. back uh, next year. I see. I mean, you came back. You played in what uh, fourteen uh, games, started in eleven yeah, of them. So you know that ain't easy. You know, uh, eleven of the last twelve, you finished uh, six right. on the team with fifty three tackles, had the uh, two picks. So I mean, you bounced back. I was, that's why I was wondering about the obstacles. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I mean, yeah. You only got two options, bro. At some point, like when you run into stuff, like you don't know, quit or you right. know, keep it moving. That part. So yeah, Lee, I mean, you're 27, man. You're young, healthy. You obviously got a lot more football in you. And uh, I do want to talk about goals a little bit later, but what I do like to do is uh, ask people why they do the things that they do. And when it comes to football and sports in general, people say, they, you know, they fell in love with the game and stuff. And I know that's a reality. But to a certain point, when you start building a family or a marriage and stuff out, outside of that, it becomes utilization for some people. So if you could, if you could just, I guess, answer the question, like, why do you play the sport of football? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, uh, yeah, you, you hit that, the, the nail on the head, like you fall in love with it, but then you see what it, it can do for you. And I, I've kind of realized that in high school, like it could give me to college. I could get a scholarship. I could, yeah. you know, i got a crazy shot. I could go to the league and make some real money. So I was like always thinking of football in that in that manner. And then when I had my college experience go the way that it went to where it wasn't looking like, you know, I'm not about to be a first round, second round pick. Like my chances of really making that kind of like life changing money are slim. So then it was like, okay, let me see how far I could take football in all types of ways. And so got to move across the world, you know what I'm saying? Got to live in Tokyo so far. Um, there's a lot of different options that have opened up since then, places that I can go because I'm now in that international circuit. Um, and you know, I don't have a family or children or anyone dependent on me. So I'm very much in a like adventurous, um, I kind of see myself in like an apprentice type of mindset of like, you know, I'm just trying to like really gather skills. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, make enough money to support my lifestyle and live how I want to live and, you know what I'm saying, be responsible enough, but still can, you know, really experience some things that might not be so accessible if I wasn't an athlete and on this schedule doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Appreciate that you asking that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Me so give us... Uh... No, I'll go, I'll go ahead, Bob. Give us one random fact about Tokyo. Random fact that we may not know. A random fact about Tokyo that you might not know. It don't even know. have to be a statistic. It could be something like, you know. Uh, it could be some I, weird, it could be some real no legit statistics. shit. Like they really cook cats and dogs in that motherfucker. Like it could okay, be some don't. Uh, <laughs> the that's that's nah. technically not even a rumor about them. That's about. Uh, China, yeah, that's right? about yeah. China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see a random fact about Tokyo. 
Man, honestly, it would probably be random enough if you told people that they got American football in Tokyo. To be real with you, I like am. I meet people I, yeah. out there who don't even really know that they got football leagues. Um, and yeah, they got. I said another random thing about Tokyo, like if you're in America, that you probably don't realize is that they they kind of like translate everything into Japanese. And like what I mean by that is like they got a special alphabet that's just for them spelling words that come from a different language that don't have a Japanese word for it, but it still gets broken down into like Japanese sounds. So Ooh. they very like, you know, particular about their culture. Like everything gotta be like spoken the way that they speak it. And like, yeah, they very uh, particular about shit like that. That's cool. Do me a favor, bro. and uh. Cause I know I'm gonna pronounce that shit all the way wrong. Pronounce it the t- your your team name. <laughs> oh, Nojima Sagamihara Rise. Nojima Sagamihara Rise. All right, bet. Like yeah, uh, so Nojima is like our sponsor, and then mm-hmm. Sagamihara is the city that we in. I like somebody about to get their ass whooped. Right. Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something, man. Um, Kendrick or J. Cole? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You know what the answer was going to be. Uh, Kendrick, for sure. Even though that J. Cole album, man, I feel like that's one of his... I feel like that might be his best, yo, that recent one. Might be. Um, might be. It might be his best, it. man. It really might yeah. be. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't feeling uh, Kiss on Drugs. Real quick, what was Kendrick's best album? Hold on now. Oh, to pimp a butterfly, yeah. Okay, okay, Stay let's go. Me. Let's go. Stay with me. So, okay. Let's go. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no that wrong answer crazy. there, man. On, man. Ain't no okay. wrong answer, bro. Nah, man. That's man. To pimp ain't a no butterfly, answer, bro. Answer, yeah. Every time. <laughs> hey, 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 I love, hey, I love. Every to time. So ain't saying nothing to me, bro. Nah, that's, a, no that's a great answer. album. That's a great album. Hey, Let me ask you one more thing. Let me ask you one more thing, man. Um, in your opinion. Who running? Who running uh, music right now? We know that, bro. <laughs> no, I was just asking. I was just asking. Who I know the question. Who running Japan. music? Yeah, like which, like you know, West Coast. Lee, I'm, te- I'm telling you, Lee, this is a shot right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's a, don't even fall into the trap, bro. We first of all, we already. We already discussed this. I think on the first I know that. Episode, I know that, that. I know that. The, that you supposed to say the South in that answer, but like, yeah. It, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, is J. Cole from the South? Like, yeah. like these niggas yeah. like to claim J. Cole, man. I don't know. So I like, I don't, <laughs> no, he know, definitely man. is. South but South like, Carolina more hillbilly than me, bro. He signed to a New York. But I thought, but I thought J. Cole was North Carolina. J. Cole, North Carolina. South. It's South. It's still in the South. Look, man. Never trying to never trying to trap you, bro. Don't fall for it. I'm just asking some questions, bro. Like, all right, look, 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 look. The West Coast got the best rapper. Look, Lee, look, Come Lee. On, man. I'll be, trying to, t- I'll be <laughs> trying to tell them that, bro. Look, man, we Nobody got a segment. The West Coast got the best they, they, could, they, could, they, could, they could run that uh, yeah, South shit fact. all they want. Don't nobody from the South want no smoke with Kendrick, man. Come Look, on, man, man. We, we, we got a segment on a pod that we starting to do with our guests, man. It's called Would You Rather. Okay. So my Would You Rather would be... When it's time for you to have a family, would you Here rather okay. raise your kids in America or raise them in Tokyo? Oh, man. America or Tokyo? Those those two options are not great. <laughs> I'll, probably say, <laughs> I'll probably say America just because... Why is it country um, I got versus family city? over here. Country versus what? City. I don't know. I mean, oh, okay, 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 okay. We can say, okay, we can say, okay, we can say, okay, we can say LA. LA or Tokyo. Oh. LA or Tokyo. Yeah, I'd probably say LA too. Uh, I got family out here, you know, so. Right. I wouldn't want to uh, have them like way far away from everybody. Right. But. Yeah, I say L.A. like uh, hesitantly. I don't really, L.A. not a, a big option either, or like my first choice. Mm, okay. Okay. 
got a, I got a would you rather too for you, bro. I, uh, I wanted you like you take two minutes on this because Jane tapped into it. Um, it's my last question for you about like different business okay. or whatever. I want you to talk a little bit yeah. about the brown, the brown green company and uh, Afro Sauce, bro. Word, word, word. Okay. Um, so, yeah, man, I'm gonna keep it a book. Like, so before I left to go to Tokyo, like I had already had like some ideas about like starting a plant company. And so I did, I, I came up with the name, the Brown Green Company and like had these ideas and like these big picture ideas for it. But, um, and then the CBD was gonna be like the first installment of that. So I was gonna like try to get like a product line going. And then like, I, I had a bunch of things written down for it, but I mean, the reality of it is like, I don't know exactly what I wanna do. And it's very, um, you know, I've been trained as an athlete. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm practiced as an athlete. Like I know how to go work out. I know how to create a workout plan for myself. I know how to, you know what I'm saying, get better. But I don't have the um, just like productivity skills of, of a creative director or of a CEO or of a um, anyone who's just involved in business. So like then like like I got away from like all of those big pictures ideas and just like really just tried to put stuff into practice and so okay. I had the background of cooking in Houston and so I just kind of like like made up a, a pop-up kitchen like underground business that I was running in Tokyo and then that's where Afro sauce comes from just from thinking about that but it's not like you know, like I, I know how to like buy some materials and create something and flip something and get some money off of it. But I'm not practiced at developing a business. And I feel like a lot of people our age, like I think this will be a dope thing for y'all to talk about on your podcast. Cause I know y'all mentioned that like all of y'all have y'all different entrepreneurial uh, things. But um, for me, that's been the biggest struggle of like getting things in the practice when I have like these big picture ideas um and so like yeah the afro sauce is just me like putting what I know into practice and then making something and just like having it to be able to sell immediately and then the brown green company is still something that you know I'm learning how to farm because in some ways it's going to support the brown green company and like things that I want to have it do but I don't know what those things are. Like it could be a landscaping company. It could be a manufacturing company that does organic cleaning products. Like there's so many different places that I could and would want to take it. Mm -hmm. So it's just more, it's more of a concept and more of a, um, something for me to work towards and like develop a, a skill set around um, as I look at what I'm gonna do in the future. Okay. In my would you rather? If that makes be, sense, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 it makes sense. Nah, nah, yeah, I did. It makes sense. Did. Yeah, 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 you broke it down. Um, sure. My would you rather would be uh, would you rather go into the past and meet your ancestors, or go into the future and meet your great great grandchildren? Oh man, um, that's a tricky one, man. That's tricky as hell. Go in the past and like so when I meet them, they know who I am too. Nah, you know you 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 full, you doing full introduction, but you know you black, so shit. <laughs> but but am I like am I meeting them on some like I'm a stranger in the bar and I just get to talk with them for a second, or I'm meeting them like yo, I'm from a hundred years in the future, like you meeting them like yo, I'm from yeah hold on. yeah that part that part that way you meeting them I'm, oh, I'm, from, I'm from the future yeah same with then your I grandchildren. Will, then I will want I will want to go meet the grandchildren if it was like okay. that. I would, okay. I would only want to see the ancestors on some like anonymous. Okay. Like no, nah, that makes okay. sense though, because if you go into the past, you don't want to freak people out saying you're from the future, number one, and then you might change. Right, man. Yeah, you know I mean, but yeah, you might I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> but if you post it up in the corner, like listening in, or, or y'all at a function or something like that, or whatever's going on, you can like kind of witness how they are. That would be pretty dope. Like, yeah, man, fuck around and come back cool. and torn ass turning into pixie dust, man. They ain't been watching too much Marvel. <laughs> I'm about to say, nigga, change something, bro. Nah, nah, nah nigga, that but, hard. but you gotta understand, like, 
no matter what impression you get from your ancestors, like let's say they ain't working, you can still come back to like your present. Like I'm, I'm, I'm making it better. My generation's better. But if you go to the future and your great great grandchildren ain't hitting on nothing. Right. Like, Dang, bro, what am I doing? That's gonna hurt. You're gonna come back home and be like, fuck, what am I doing wrong? This shit may not be right. I ain't leave them niggas nothing. Yeah. What that nigga <laughs> Floyd said, your kids can't take legacy. You gotta get to that chicken. So yeah, yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> your great great grandchildren ordering that McDouble with no no cheese, just ketchup. <laughs> Nah, man. Hey, <laughs> y'all, y'all got some would you rather? Y'all want to get into these quick hitters? Now let's hit the quick hitters, man. All right, uh, all right, Lee, Fave MC. Mm. Don't think too hard, Kendrick. man. We in the mo- we in the moment. Y'all got that, you know. Kendrick, we don't, we don't, yeah, Kendrick. Get a little upset. Fave athlete, any sport. Favorite athlete in any sport. Playing, retired, like, uh, don't matter. Man, I like Ali. Okay. I that's love it. I love that's it. it. Okay. We're going to hit a uh, fave movie. That's a tough one. Favorite that's a tough movie. One. We in the moment. Man. Don't think too hard. Can I give you, can I give you a couple? Because they go back and forth. Give me, give me, give me like, top three. Top three. No order. I'll give you three. That's perfect. So, The Matrix. Pope Fiction Ooh. and uh and uh the Dark Knight Rises, the one with Bang. Actually, I think yeah, yeah, you and Jane might be homeboys. You and Gene might be homeboys now. <laughs> I'm a dark dark knight in my top three. I ain't gonna lie. Don't bro. start no. this shit, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro. Last <laughs> one is uh yeah, I'll, that's why I said that. Yeah, all right. Last one is gonna be a uh, fake book. Favorite book. You can give me top three with those oh, two. Don't matter. Imagine Devin Booker. Man. <laughs> I like nah. uh I like uh power versus force. Okay. That one's crazy. Um A Course in Miracles is crazy. Um Warrior of the Light, that's a dope. It's not okay. even like a full book. That one's just like a, a pamphlet, like a main. Yeah, I'll drop those three. Those three is pretty fly. You ain't imagine he said Harry Potter, Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this this one hey, off the dome right here. Soldier, Soldier of Bow Wow and the verses coming up, bro. Who you oh, got, man? God. Hey man, hey, I saw the I saw the Bow Wow disrespect and I was like, niggas with this niggas, niggas, oh, niggas, niggas don't understand. God. Niggas don't understand bro. Bow Wow is a cultural nigga that what Bow Wow is everything, bro, for the culture. They, they the, bro, I'm so like Soulja Boy show, type bro. too. Soulja, niggas don't want to hear me, bro. Type too, but like I had man, to turn my back on everybody wanted to be, everybody hear. wanted to be Bow Wow, dog. Lee. Like Lee. Bow wow. Only when Bow Wow point, came out with Snoop, that bro. was my only Come on, point, man. bro. You don't like, understand how when I was a kid watching that, like, really nigga, got, bro. I, nigga, I gotta be Bow Wow, bro. That was my <laughs> that whole thought process. Like, <laughs> like, nigga, when what was the movie where he was uh hooping? That like, was like, Bow Wow was the one, so bro. Boy ain't in no like, 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 like no roll bounce, bro. I'm trying to so keep these niggas got understand no this, like, man. Come on, man. Definitely ain't got no roll bounce. Let's stop. Lottery let's stop. Let's, let's stop. Gene like watches it. those movies to this day. Time out. Come on, let's man. stop acting like Bow Wow. No. Like Bow Wow got a respect for role in these movies. He get his ass whooped in every movie. <laughs> 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 Lottery ticket. He got his man. ass whooped. Roll bounce. He got his, he like get his Mike, ass whooped. He, he got. Hey, he, was, he get his. He was, he was the main. He was hey, the main man. character though. He hey, was the main man. character. Bow Wow is Bow Wow is a cultural icon. And we hey, will I, respect I, Bow Wow as a bro, cultural We got to protect Time Bow Wow, bro. Time Wait, out. We, 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 we just got to. When you said bro, respect. Bro, both of they, look, I tried to get them to understand this, bro. Both of their personalities. And then the catalog? Trash, Bow Wow catalog? But the, Come on, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the verses, bro. Because these niggas think Soldier going to take it. But, you know, I think they're thinking about 2011 on. So, they they forgot like about three our songs, childhood, bro. bro. I wouldn't say three. Yeah, man. Bow Wow, Bow wow got a real catalog. Like, let me yeah. ask you something. Let me ask you something, Lee. When the last time you played a Bow Wow song, my guy? 
I would say, I would say, actually, I played Shotty like mine after I watched y'all podcast when y'all were disrespecting them. No, no, I no, did go man. back and listen to that one. Oh, I definitely, I definitely. All right, all right, I got you, I got you. For the podcast? For the podcast. It was more recent than the Soulja Boy song. It's been, been a minute for me. I'm a, but it's I'm been a honest. minute for sure. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. I for sure, I for sure played the Soulja Boy song lately. Man. I ain't listened to Bow Wow since I had light up shoes, man. Y'all get out of but here, it, man. But it's the catalog, bro. That was my only argument. It's the catalog. We've been around for, since we've been little kids, bro. Y'all gonna y'all know Ray Ray J man. really need a versus, man. Ray J need a versus. Don't need somebody. Uh, I do and that's another. And, and that's a wrap for the last episode of Open Rub. <laughs> 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 Lee start talking about Ray J versus, man. I might be doing hey, this shit. Hey, what, 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 Vin, what Vince Staples say, bro? Ray J, Ray J, uh. Ray J at the point of damn near everything, bro. Man, Ray J need to release this song he played at uh Ray at J Hulk. Icon too, man. <laughs> I know if man. I see that one uh, Love and Hip Hop or whatever TV show that is, and Ray J Skull Cap change position again, I might be through. <laughs> I, I, I might be done. Hey, but look, man, Lee, we appreciate you coming on the pod, right. man. Another great episode. Or the open right. run podcast. No doubt, man. Twan been checking yeah, on Soleil all episode, so y'all got to excuse yes, my boy. The, the family comes first, you understand me? But another yeah, great right. episode, man. All the new viewers, we appreciate y'all. All the new subs, we appreciate y'all, man. If y'all right. tapping in, make sure y'all hit that sub button. Yes, sir. We'll see y'all in this man. next episode. Peace. Peace.